Hey guys, this is Jared with Heat Press Nation. Today we're really excited to talk to you about Silhouette Studio version 4. Now this is the update to the previous versions of Silhouette Studio that we've come to know and love, and this new version is packed with tons of great new features and a new layout. Let's have a look. The one thing we want to point out first is that we are working in Silhouette Studio Designer Edition, which is the upgraded edition uh, from Silhouette Studio uh, Basic. So now, I'll, now there are a couple features that are exclusive to this upgraded version of the software, but I'll go ahead and let you know. So if you're following along and you have the Silhouette Basic version, uh, this video will still be very helpful in giving you a brief overview of the new Silhouette Studio version 4. So let's go ahead and dig in. Now the first thing you're going to notice is the new modernized software look and feel. This styling is going to feel familiar if you're a user of Illustrator or a similar program. Now it is a lot more streamlined and less cluttered, so your workspace is going to stay nice and tidy. So the first thing we're going to want to point out is the new navigation bar which has the design, store, library, and send. Now this, now keeping all these here together, you'll notice they do toggle very easily back and forth between them uh, and having them all nicely organized up here in the corner uh, sticks with the new streamlined theme and in my opinion it works perfectly. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the send screen. Now this is probably going to be one of the biggest process changes from the previous versions of Silhouette Studio. So once you're ready to send your project to your machine, you're going to begin the process by selecting your material type. Now there's a really big list of different materials to work with. These are all presets uh, from Silhouette. So pretty much anything you can do on your Cameo uh, is going to be listed here. Um, if not, you can always click on add new material type. And if one of the presets needs a little bit of tweaking for your particular material, uh, you can go ahead and edit that selected material and you will edit the preset. So for all future use, uh, it'll be ready for that material. So you're going to go ahead and select your material. You're going to click next, or you can just click directly up here, action. Uh, you're going to go ahead and select you know, your, your tool. Now you'll notice we have tool one and tool two. This is for users of the Cameo 3, which has the dual carriage system. If you're a user of a Cameo 1 or 2, you can go ahead and just select tool one, and then you're going to want to, it's probably going to default from auto to auto blade, so you're going to want to make sure you're on the ratchet blade or whatever other tool that you have inserted into your Cameo at the time. Once you've selected that, you can either click on next or we can click on send up here. It's going to give you um, it's going to give you some quick instructions here. You want to click through, make sure you have everything correct, and then if you've already done that, you can go ahead and just click on start, and you'll send your file to your Cameo to be cut. Okay, so the next feature we're going to talk about, which is one that I happen to really like, is going to be the floating panels. So previously, you click on a different function, and it'll pop up right here. And when you click on the next one, it'll get replaced in that same spot. Well, now what you can do is if you want to keep one of these functions always on hand, you can just drag it over here. And when you click on the next one, it'll show up in its place. So you can keep pretty much as many panels as you can fit open. You just got to remember to move it um, out of the way. For example, if, like let's say I click on transform, and if I don't move it, it'll just get replaced when I click on the next function. So if you want to keep it on your workspace, uh, you're just going to want to move it out of the way, and then you can click the next one. And the next one will come up, and you can load your screen with as many of these panels uh, as you like. So I like a neat workspace, so I'm probably only going to keep a couple at a time. Um, but really, whatever works best for you, you can go ahead and customize your workspace with all the panels you like. Great feature. So now we're going to talk about our dynamic toolbar, which is anytime you click on an object, you're going to have this toolbar up here that changes depending on what you're clicking. So if you have like some text, instantly the dynamic toolbar will come up with some of the most commonly used functions uh, for doing text. So let's say if I click on this star, for example, before, if I wanted to resize it, I'd have to go over here to transform, scale, resize. Um, or of course you can drag it by the corner, but now if I need it to be you know, a particular size, I can just click up here, hit enter, type it in, hit enter, and now it's resized it. You can toggle between locking proportions. A lot of great tools for editing objects are all right here at your fingertips. So instead of toggling between you know, different functions over here, um, it's right there. It makes it a lot easier 
uh, to use. It's very much more efficient, and I just really like the feel of it. Okay, so now we're going to show you one of the new features that comes with the Vasilla Studio version 4, and it's going to be the Object on Path feature. So to do this, click on your object, click on the Replicate tool, and we're going to, this is the icon for Object on Path. You're going to want to show Grab Handle, and then grab it and place it onto the path of whatever shape you want. Now this is going to be, this is a lot here, number of repeats. We don't want 100, we want 10, so just hit 10. Enter. There we go. And now I have 10 stars along the path of this circle. Now we can increase that if we want. If we wanted to fill it out a little bit more full, that looks about right. Uh, another thing you can do is you can adjust the increment angle. You know, there's a, there's a lot of different things that you can do uh, to make this as custom as possible for your design. I'm going to take this back down to zero. Last thing you'll do when you're done is you're going to release the copies, uh, and you're probably going to want to drag the original path away. Now these can still be tweaked individually, so if there's anything that doesn't come out perfectly right to your liking, you can rotate, resize, do whatever you want. Uh, me, I'm probably going to want to just group this now, and so I can treat it as a single piece, which is how I want it. And so look at that. Now doing that without the object on path feature would probably take a really long time in the previous versions of Silhouette Studio. So we're really glad to have this new feature. Okay, so we're gonna go over some features to Silhouette Studio version four that have been added and are exclusive to the designer edition, um, but they're really invaluable tools. For example, the trace by color uh, and even the magnet trace feature, both of them are a godsend for anyone who's ever had a client submit a multicolored logo uh, and you know wanting a decal made from that. Uh, you'll know that you'll either have to separate the colors in Photoshop um, or, you know, get a black and white version of the logo so you can trace it like that. This eliminates the need for that and to me is really helpful, definitely worth uh, the upgrade. So if you have the opportunity to upgrade, highly recommend doing so. So we have a separate video for the trace by color feature, but really quick, just want to show you how easy it is. You're going to click trace by color and let's say we wanted to trace only the red. We're just going to use the eyedrop tool, click on the red click trace, move this out of the way, and there we go, we've traced the red. So you can see it's very, very simple to use. Of course, you can fine tune it um, with the settings here. Okay, so this is the magnet trace tool. We've already have our, had our tool selected here. We've adjusted the size of our buffer space. I'm gonna call it a buffer space just because, uh, I don't know if there's an official name for it yet. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna call it a buffer space. And what it does is, uh, once there's a detected edge inside this buffer space, uh, your cursor is going to attach. You see that little red dot there? It's going to attach to that detected edge. So you can click down, and you still want to be careful, but you'll notice a huge difference. It's kind of one of those things that you have to actually try it yourself so you can appreciate how much easier it is to trace out these things versus going at it with like an eraser tool or something like that. So I'm just dragging it around the edge. And then once you complete your circle or you complete your shape, it'll automatically just erase out the background of that. So it's a really great, really helpful tool. Um, if let's say I wanted to cut out this circle, oh, you see I went a little loose, boom. So you can see it's a really great, really helpful tool uh, for eliminating backgrounds off of things that you want to trace. For finer details, I would definitely recommend going back to the the trace by color tool, but that's not always going to be available if the colors are really close uh, in shade together. For that, you're going to want to pull out the magnet trace tool uh, and do it manually. Another tool that's going to be really helpful that's new to Silhouette Studio version 4 is the new project wizard. You click on that and it has all of these uh, file types already set up for you to go ahead and get started. So you can go straight to designing instead of spending time, you know, working through, setting up your file, setting up your margins and things like that. We clicked on the preset for card and it already has a nice card ready for us. Of course, you can still customize it. For example, if you don't have a portrait size cutting mat, you can go ahead and select whatever size you have. It's gonna adjust here and your workspace is still the same. And you'll notice that when you go to send, it already has everything loaded. So your materials already loaded there, card stock, which of course, fully customizable, you can still adjust but using the new project wizard will give you a great head start when starting a new project. 
So the last feature we're going to talk about uh, in this video is going to be the tutorials feature. Now this is a new feature for Silhouette version 4. So we're going to click on tutorials. It's going to take us to a library uh, that's ever growing of tutorials for using your Silhouette Studio uh, and your Cameo 3. So like for example, this one's really helpful. Send a Silhouette making the first cut. So for new users, if you feel kind of intimidated by all of these features, by all the functions, by all the great things that your Silhouette Cameo can do, uh, it's great to get started with this tutorial. It even tells you about how long it's going to be to get through it. So for example, the making the first cut tutorial, we click on start and this little module is going to pop up here on the bottom left and you can take it at your own speed. So you're just going to click through and it's going to guide you through everything you need uh, for making your first cut with your Silhouette Cameo using uh, Silhouette Studio version 4. Okay, well there you go. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below or you can reach us at 800-215-0894 or on our website www.heatpressnation.com. Also, we'd love to see what you're working on, so please feel free to tag us using the hashtag HPN Creators. Thank you so much.